Scientists believe comets vary in their makeup. So Schultz and his team built several different models. Then, hit each with shot from their ultra-high-speed gun. The first scenario is what happens if we impact into something that looks like lunar dust. The second one is what happens if we impact into fluff. And the third one is what happens if we impact into a fluff covered with an organic layer. As we go down and look at the evolution of this crater, we find at the very end, after it's finished, we can still see the crater here. But in these two cases, when we're using fluff, we can't see the crater. It's completely masked. The fluff completely absorbed the projectile, a frustrating result for scientists hoping to get a look inside. And there was another possibility Schultz had to consider. What if the entire comet is extremely fragile and porous? He searched for a substance for that simulation. The comet may be sort of like a fluff ball. It may have been very low density. What do we do to try to simulate that? The best thing probably is a complex organic. What would that be? Cotton candy. So what we're going to try to do is to concoct a, a, a superficial comet, an imaginary comet, and see if we can't fire into that and see what happens. So what, we're, what we'll end up doing here is to get this very low density, this fibrous material. OK, that looks pretty good. OK, what we're now going to do is we're going to suspend this in the vacuum chamber, slam into it at a very high velocity, and we're going to find out whether it blows it apart or if the projectile will go straight through. OK, we're, we're all set. We've got our comet made of cotton candy. Let's turn off the lights and let's get out of here. The projectile soared right through the comet, and you back her up. but the force shattered it. Oh, is that cool? <laughs> Kapow! <laughs> well, it did drill through it. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, I gotta see this. <laughs> oh my God! There's no more comet, that's for sure. What a mess. But this is not good news. A shattered comet can be even more dangerous than an intact one. The pieces tend to remain on the same path, turning one projectile into many. In 2005, once the team had completed their tests, NASA was ready to take the plunge. It would try to drive an impactor into a comet to find out what's inside. Deep Impact's principal investigator is the University of Maryland's Dr. Michael Ahern. So here we have the uh, model of both Deep Impact spacecraft. Many people think it was only one spacecraft, but it's really two. The flyby spacecraft has all the instruments on this platform on one side. And if I turn it around, these are the solar panels that provide the uh, electric power. Here is the impactor. That is a third of a ton geologist's hammer with which you hit something to see how it behaves when you hit it. January the 12th, 2005. After six years of study and preparation, Deep Impact was ready for liftoff. Three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of a Delta II rocket carrying Deep Impact. The spacecraft's destination was a comet named Temple One. Discovered in 1867, it's well known to astronomers. It orbits the sun every five and a half years and has lost much of its gas and ice. People would argue that you should preserve the comets for posterity, but doing a violent study on one that is just typical of a whole class seemed to us to be the right choice uh, for science. Deep impact takes just five months to reach Temple One's orbit. 
On July the 2nd, 2005, it turns and points its cameras at the comet, 300,000 kilometers away. Then, it released its impactor. If all went well, the collision would blow a hole in Temple One, about 180 meters across and five stories deep, about the size of the Roman Colosseum. But it might destroy the comet by breaking it apart. I was more worried that we didn't know enough about the comet and the impactor might go in and just make a meter diameter hole 100 feet deep. And then we'd be hard pressed to tell whether we had actually hit or had missed. Back on Earth, hundreds of scientists held their breath. We lost signal and we had to stand there and wait around. So everybody was trying to be, you know, go keep busy and not feel anxious. But just in time, the signal returned. Yes. Energy went in, bounced back, and drew out all this material from beneath the surface, which was then exposed out in space into sunlight. And so this is scattered sunlight off of all of this debris that was excavated from the interior of Comet Temple 1. The comet and NASA's craft had collided at over 30,000 kilometers an hour. The explosion was equal to nearly five tons of TNT. It vaporized the impactor completely. And it kicked up far more dust than anyone expected. One of the reasons it was so dusty is that the particles were much smaller than we thought. This is a very fluffy body. The amount of dust was a telltale clue to the comet's makeup. Temple One, at least on the surface, contained far less ice than scientists expected. There was no way that there were large blocks of ice anywhere or rock. And that really is helping us formulate how did these comets get put together? How did they break up? This is the first data we've ever had. So in that sense, it's revolutionary. Analysis of the dust showed molecules containing carbon, organic material. So it's plausible that comets could have brought such material to Earth early in its history. A return mission is planned to take another look. In 2010, NASA will have redirected the Stardust spacecraft to go back to Temple 1 and look for the crater that we formed to see what happened to the surface and the rest of the comet when we impacted it. Scientists hope to learn much from deep impact, including how to stop a comet from colliding with Earth. Some thought deep impact might knock the comet Temple 1 into a slightly different orbit. But the comet has continued on exactly the same path as before. It was a secondary objective of the deep impact mission to come up with a plan to mitigate an impact if we had to. Did we figure out what it would take to move a comet out of an orbit that was intersecting the Earth? We didn't figure out enough. Despite the inconclusive results, many still consider deep impact the best model for stopping a rogue comet. The key will be to send a larger spacecraft and to hit the comet much harder. Let's assume that this is the cometary nucleus. One way of slowing it down and having it miss the Earth in 20 or 30 years' time is to simply run into it. Bam. If that doesn't work, do it again. If that doesn't work, do it again. But some think we'll need a more radical approach. <laughs> 